so I think I'll share my, okay. I think you need to, of Lucky Mary Mano, you need to give me, okay, I'm the host. Good, so I can share my screen. But first, let me look at the presentation. The session is being recorded, so you can ask afterwards. And also, I will share the slides afterwards. But I think to get the most of it, of the presentation, you actually need to be here. Uh, all right. Fantastic. So here we go. Share my desktop. Can you all see my slide, my screen? Yes, looks. All right. So I know the topic is time management, but you could also make it life management or goal management or anything, because really our life is consists of time and the goals we have to execute are also like, you need time to get to make these things happen. So I will take the first slide. So the question is, the, the top title is ABC of time management, but very soon you say, realize that I couldn't fit it into ABC. So we have more than three steps. Um, but why are we doing this? So why time management? So this is something that's really got to do with Dufuna. So we ran a survey. 15 people responded to that survey and 60% of them, when we asked the question, what challenges did or are you facing with learning? 60% said time management. I mean, there are lots of other issues and I'm not trying to belittle any issues that maybe even issues that have to do with Dufuna as well. Some people had issues with mentors. Some people were not happy with offline access. Some people didn't want to learn on the app. Some people were not happy with mentors. Um, some people had device issues, financial issues, etc. But the major one was time. Um, and so that's why we thought, like, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Let's see how we can have a conversation around it. And then I invited two people. Ruby, because she has three children and she was able to finish the course ahead of many people who were single. And I know that Ruby's not a millionaire yet. She's on her way. Joshua also finished the course in about less than six months, actually, and with a job. So that's why we just identified both of them and thought we'll pick them. The other person we wanted to call was um, Chabu, but Chabu is not available today. Chabu actually finished the course over a longer period of time, but he also has a job. And the reason we wanted him to come is because we thought it would be nice to bring someone who also has a full-time job. So that's why we picked on the, on, the, on the course. So now let's get on to the ABC, the E squared of time management. <laughs> so not quite ABC, the E. So the first one, first letter I'll talk about is A, and that's AIM. And I think in many ways, it's, uh, it, it's logical, right? It's like a certain target, certain goal. And many people are used to this, to certain goals and certain targets, because we all have, well, many people at different times would have had new year resolutions. Many people would have um, come up with a project they want to finish or something they want to accomplish. And yeah, so we aim for something, we set a goal. And I'll talk a little bit about this. When you're setting a goal, when you have a project or something you're trying to achieve, it's usually a big thing. So for those of us that went to university, we'll say, oh, I'd like to maybe go to university and finish with the first class. But the reality is that's a big goal. When you set that goal, four or five, or maybe for those that study medicine, seven years at university is still a long way away. It's difficult. So it's easy to say it or talk about it. 
when you're still like very far at the beginning of, of the goal. But if you do not break down that goal into small chunks, it's highly unlikely you'll achieve that goal. So the same goes for the funnel. It's, we always tell people it's a six month or nine month course. If you cannot break it down into what you'll be doing, maybe even on a daily basis, it will become unachievable. So this is where I'm gonna be putting that Joshua or Ruby on the spot. So I'll ask Ruby. No, actually, let me start with Joshua. So Joshua, can you please just tell us how you went about like planning for your Dufuna, for completing your Dufuna program? Yeah, all right. So good evening, everyone. Can, am I here clearly? Am I being here clearly? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, what I did was that I took, I divided the modules into portions and um, set targets for weeks and uh, months and decided to work with those targets. So rather than just consider it as one big task for six months, I divided into subtasks for weeks and months and worked with those work past subtasks. So I joked to myself, not on the full task, but on the subtasks themselves so that um, I could be encouraged to keep going because when you have a big task, you can get overwhelmed. But if you have soft tasks, you can see the progress that you're making at that time and you can keep working. So that was what I did, divided into soft tasks and worked per week, per month, per module. All right. Thank you so much, um, Joshua. My so I, I always tell people a story. So, and I'm going to give you away my age in a bit. So I've been married for quite a while now. And I remember when I was getting married, somebody, well, just before I got married, I guess with many men, I hear many men face this sort of anxiety. Like, am I marrying the right person? Will I be able to love this person for all the rest of my life? It's so easy to go to church or mosque or the court and you read those vows when you are infatuated or whatever, and you say to death, do us part. But actually, when you really consider it, being married to the same person for 30, 40 years is a long time, and it's difficult to visualize. So I told someone, I think someone asked me, that, how, do you, how are you going to manage it? How do you know you can survive 20, 25, 30 years with this person? So I told the person, you know what I'm going to do? I'll focus on today focus on tomorrow. If I can love this person and stay in this marriage today and tomorrow, then I think I'll be fine. And I have stuck with that principle. And this year I'll be married 19 years now. So suddenly it looks like, yeah, if someone asks me now, you know, can I go another 19 years? It looks achievable. But when I started, like I couldn't even think about one year but I could think about that day and I could think about the day after. So when you have a big goal, learn to break it down into small bits, just like Joshua said. And you need to break it down even to like a day or a week. So you know this is what you need to be doing. So that way it's a lot easier to manage. Right, I think that helps with A. So just to summarize what A looks like, the A min is... And again, I always apologize for the elephants, sorry, <laughs> for the vegetarians, because this might be offensive to them, but a good way to visualize a big goal. So you have an elephant, you want to eat it, what are you going to do? Eat a bite at a time. If you stuff yourself with the elephant, you're going to kill yourself. So you've got to figure out how to do it in small portions. So that is A for aim. All right. So we've done the first bit. It's easy from here on to move on. The clear goal, I wanna finish, I wanna learn how to code in one year. How do you do it? How do you break it down? And this is why the Dufuna course has been broken down into small steps to help. But this is obviously not enough because not everyone that starts finishes. So how else can we help? And towards the end, we'll take more questions and suggestions as well. So the next thing is B. 
So you could say B is for blocks or for building blocks. So what are building blocks? Building blocks are the things you need, right? To achieve your goal or your aim, right? So I'm gonna ask, this time I'll ask Ruby, when you started, what were the things you identified that you needed to achieve this goal of learning how to code? Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Tooks. Um, okay, so basically, uh, before I applied or when I applied, I realized it was a 100% virtual um, program. So, and they pretty much, you know, told us what we will be needing, a laptop and uh, data. So that was basically, I knew that if I needed to achieve my goal, I needed, I needed a laptop and I needed a good source of data. And um, I think another extra thing, one of the Nigerian factors, of course, is electricity. We need power and we know um, how epileptic, epileptic our power supply is, but um, I pretty much factored out that this was the three things I need. Uh, I needed to complete the course because if you don't have data, you cannot have access to the app and the courses. So I got my laptop ready. I had to subscribe, you know, for data. At the point I was doing, at, at the point I was doing, um, uh, I think if one five for, um, um, I think, uh, I think, is it six weeks or so, or a week? I think that was how, yeah, one five for a week. And then at the point I started doing the monthly data, you know, just to save costs, you know, and um, it really, it really helped me. And I, I was able to, and then I, I think I was also very um, opportun opportune to stay in a place where light wasn't a problem at that time. So, um, I could walk throughout the night, I could walk through the day and, and I, my laptop was, you know, always um, charged. So those were the things I needed. I, I knew I needed and I had to walk um, it through to get my, achieve my goal. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, so building blocks. For anything you want to do, whether you're building a house, you're building your career, you're going to school, you need to identify these things because it's really important. But what we need to do sometimes is we also, when we're thinking of our building blocks, we are thinking of our wants, not our needs. So some people might say, oh, I'll learn how to code when I have a Mac. Come on, like, do you need a Mac to learn how to code or can you even start with what you've got? I've heard stories of different stories. There's a lady that I heard, she learned how to code with a simple Nokia phone. So she didn't have a laptop initially, but she found a way around it. I know that um, I said I learned how to code a long time ago. So for me, it was different. But when I started, I didn't even have a computer. So we used to write the code on paper and then we'll figure out, okay, will it run or will it not run? So eventually I started working somewhere, I got, access to a computer and I will, you know, initially I took permission to take the laptop home, but this was way back before batteries were developed. So within 50, maybe 30 minutes of battery life. Um, and again, the power situation in Nigeria, for example, has never improved. Um, so when I was coding in 2000 or 1999, or whenever that was, I know probably some people were not born then. Uh, <laughs> Um, I face the same problems, those power issues. But hey, you know, what do I do? Do I give up or do I just focus on what I must have? And then the other thing with building block is you won't always have everything. I can't remember whether it was Ruby who didn't have a mobile device, but then she spoke up. She said, hey guys, I don't have a, a, an Android phone. And I think at the time we only had Android devices. Somebody did. And then we- Yes, that was for, the one. Oh yeah, it was, it was Ruby. So when you identify the things you need, even if you don't have all of them, you can identify where can you get help and please learn to speak up. Sometimes people are either too proud or lacking in confidence or having a, a, an unnecessary complex to ask for help. Everybody needs help in this world. It doesn't matter who you are. 
you know, people need help. So identify your building blocks. Know the ones you have and the ones that you do not have, figure out how to get them. So like R Ruby was saying, I didn't have a laptop. I was working in a place where I could take the laptop home. I negotiated it, I took it home. There was a time I didn't have access to the internet. Imagine what the internet was like in 2000 and whatever was that, 2000 and 2001. I, God blessed me with a job at um, an ISP, but I couldn't take the internet home. So good, good thing was, was an ISP. So I used to pretty much, I made friends with the guys who were on night shift and I'll stay up all night with the guys because then I could get access to the internet forever. So it all depends on identifying the things you need, find a way to access them. And this is where you need to be bold and courageous. You know, thank you Ruby for sharing your story. So I'll go to the next one, your constraints. Now it doesn't matter who you are, everyone has constraints. And I'll tell you the difference between constraints and the next one, a constraint is a reason that you may not achieve your aim. And this could be anything from I've got a job, I've got kids, I live in a place where there's no power. You know, practical things. I'm married. I am, I don't know if that's a constraint. Um, I don't have a laptop. Um, I don't have money to buy data. So the things I cannot get rid of, how do I manage them? So the question is, all your constraints, how do you manage them? Um, Okay, again, I'll ask Ruby. <laughs> how do you do manage your constraints, Ruby? What were they to start with? And how do you do manage them? Okay, so one of my major, major constraints was my children, you know, and um, luckily before I started um, Dufuna, I, I, I also, because I, I, was, I was always almost drained every day um, because when you have children, they always want to take all of your time. So at a point I decided something, I, I made up my mind that I was gonna put my children to bed by 7 p.m. That was one of the things that I think gave me some kind of sanity. So um, by seven, my children are in bed. And what that does for me is, and when my children are in bed by seven, that means that dinner has to be ready before seven. They have to get to eat before seven and then you know, rest a little bit and then get to bed by seven. So I had to start prepping for maybe 5.36, you know, for them to get to meet my target of seven. So by the time I got into Dufuna, I realized that, and then I also understood that I'm more of um, active at night. So once I put the children to bed by seven, I can go in because when they are back from school, uh, around to I, I can't do anything. I can't, and then when, they're, when they're on holidays, I also cannot do anything when they're there because I really don't even have, I don't even have a nanny or a help yet. So um, that was a major constraint for me, but I cannot get rid of them. You know, I just have to manage them. So once I put them to bed by seven, um, I, I, I knew that there were some points where I was awake all through the night, like, I, I'm awake till 6 a.m. when I had to wake, put, get them up from bed. I didn't, I didn't close my eyes. You know, I think when we were doing one or two modules like that, CSS, I didn't sleep, practically didn't sleep. So I stayed all through the night because that was only when I could think I could have, nobody's pulling my dress, nobody is calling me and asking me for water or, you know, that was only when I could focus, especially when they're on, hol on holidays or when we long back. So, um, sometimes I particularly walk all through the night because I know that I can sleep when they are playing, you know, I can get some sleep. So um, that was how I was able to achieve some of the things that I did. So sometimes I would walk all through the night and then wake and not wake up, like get out of bed or whatever I'm doing, then wake them up, take them to school, then bring them back, then come back home and then I, then I sleep, you know? So those are how, that, that, that was how I was able to manage, you know, I manage them basically. Not talking about um, the home, you know, the house chores, the um, other things. I'm, I'm also like um, um, uh, de uh, de devoted to, you know. But I think the major um, things were my were my children. Yeah. Really good. Thank you for sharing, uh, Ruby. And you you couldn't get rid of your children, like you said. And what are you <laughs> 
Right. So guys, everyone has constraints. They are the things trying to like basically compress you, push you in, stop you from achieving your goals or your dreams or your aims. So the thing is you can get rid of them, but you can manage them. And you, you just have to devise your own strategies. Ruby understood herself. Ruby told herself, look, I work at night and I'll use the night. So you're, we're all constrained by something. So the thing is, when you're setting a goal to manage your time, do not underestimate them. And then do not overestimate them as well. It's really important. But please don't make them your excuses. Ruby could have said, I've got three children. I'm never going to learn how to code. And that's it. And today she still wouldn't learn how to code. But if you learn to manage them, then they don't become excuses. Right, so we're making progress. So we're ABC, we've done three, and we've got three to go. The next is your distractions. <laughs> this is an interesting one. All right, okay. Your distractions are very close to your constraints, and I separated them for a reason. They are also the reasons you may not achieve your aim. But this time around, you can get rid of them. The question is, how do you stay focused when I do stay disciplined? So now I'm going to go to Joshua. So Joshua, what are your weaknesses? What are your distractions? Oh, I'm smiling right here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you rightly said it. When it comes to distractions, there are things that you can get rid of. Sometimes there are things you actually enjoy, things you you love to do. For instance, um, I, like Ruby said, she she works she works better at night. She's able to focus at night. Same with me though. But the sad part of the story is I like to play games a lot. So that for me it matters this time. So I had to now deliberately take out my game time and make it my study time. So I had to replace um, the game with studying and learning how to code. Now, that does not mean that I effectively removed gaming from that period. It just meant that I knew that I had to take it out of the picture to focus on something. And really, that's the, the big deal. The big deal is about recognizing what takes, what comes first, what is priority, which, what is really important, and then giving that which you consider important the important role that you should have, making what you consider first place first place. Because um, I, I think in one of those books I read, Getting Things Done, the author said that it's not, it's really not about the fact that you don't know that it's important. It's just somewhere in your heart, you've not seen it as important enough to take away the other things that are taking your time and attention and focusing on it. So it's about checking your way, doing way of, um, uh, what the uh, field of preference, economics, assess one field of preference and checking, okay, this is really important. I really want to learn how to code. I mean, I want to make the money that I need to make, right? Okay, so I want to be badass at this right here. Okay, so I'm going to have to shelve this and focus on that. So it's about setting priorities. That's the one way to deal with distractions, really. What is important? How do you want to handle it as important? What needs to go away for you to make this important and really keep it as important. And then uh, it's tough, it's hard, especially if your distraction is something you really enjoy, but yeah, you can actually go with it. And that, that was what I did really. Thank you, Joshua. My biggest distraction for me, I mean, is my phone, right? Um, sometimes, and for me, I'm, I'm a, I like keeping up with what's going on in the world, so the news. So one of the things I've done recently is not to um, not to check the news early in the morning anymore. The moment I, you know, just not check the news because I'll tell you in the mornings I check about maybe ten websites for the news, all Nigerian newspapers, BBC, um, Sky News. I check two Dutch newspapers as well. I mean, for heaven's sake, I'm not, I'm not a journalist, so why do I need so much news? So what I started doing was, okay, I'll tell myself, you know what? I'm never going to check the news in the morning. I'll check it at lunchtime at 12. By the time I do that, the news is still anyway, so quick. I'm able to do it in a few minutes. 
So everyone has got distractions. The thing is, how do you stay focused on discipline? So it's really up to you. And for this one, it's really, in a way, I've used the prison cell, yeah? Your distractions are your main, they're your real competition. So the other part of this quote, I got it from the internet. Your real competition is your distraction. But honestly, this is where you need to look at yourself in the mirror and be honest with yourselves. You know, is it social media? Is it this? Is it going out to the parties? It could be anything. It could even be your social networks. It could be your commitments. And I'm not necessarily at risk of uh, blasphemy. Um, it could be even be your, your commitments in places like churches, you know. Yeah, I'm a Christian, I go to church, but I also know that many times um, religious organizations take quite a lot of our time for service. It's good, but you need to find a balance in life. It's really, really important to find that balance. I can't say that enough, especially for Africans. You know, a balance is important. There's a time to go to church or the mosque can serve, but there's also a time when you need to focus on your ultimate goal. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just important to find that balance. So, the, so even the good things in your life can become distractions as well. Just make sure that you only have 24 hours and you need to spend the time well. Another distraction I have is Netflix. So one day this year, usually my weekends I, you know, I spend with binging. So I told myself this weekend I'm not, or this day I'm not gonna watch at all. Suddenly I freed up for myself maybe like eight hours. I sat down in bed, I got a lot done. So managing your distractions, very, very important. So now we're getting to the end of it. We're not E, execute. Okay, where do I start? What can I do to start now? I'll stay with Joshua. So, how did you decide to start? Did you, you know, what was your plan? How did you get about it? Hmm, where do I start? <laughs> uh, it, it begins by identifying what the short tasks are, like we said initially, your aim, and then taking it from the least bit, the simplest, easiest, to the more complex, the bigger one. So you'll have handled your distractions, you'll have considered your constraints, you'll have um, checked out everything you need to check out, you'll have broken the task into simpler bits. Then you can begin to execute. And in your execution, um, you'll have to consider your sub task. Like I, like I said, it's not about, don't look at the big task, don't look at everything. Um, somebody was said that, um, in in this in many places, what people look at is product, not process. But in this case, your process is what you are going to focus on um, as you execute your task. You are going to get the product, yes, but you have to focus on your process. So, um, a sub task per day, per week, um, per hour, depending on what you want to do. Like I said, I divided mine into weeks. In fact, I had. Had days when I sat down with my PC and I'm like, okay, you know what? We're going to consume two modules today. We're going to push, run, um, write the code, go through the videos, write the code, push, request PR, message routine at DM, was it received back then? <laughs> message routine at DM, confirm that it's been, um, it's been marked. If you don't get a match in one hour, send another message. And it was constantly like that. Um, when you have a blocker, what's causing this blocker? Um, who can I meet to clear this blocker? Because you're actually going to have blockers. You're going to have um, things that are going to um, slow you down. Sometimes they're not intentional. They're not things that you cause. It could be any anything could have caused it. It could be power supply. It could be it could be data running out. It, there are many things that could cause blockers. So identify your blockers. Okay, now that I have this blocker, what can I do about this blocker? How am I going to sort out this blocker? And then once you identify those things. Then you take your steps one by one. Um, a journey of a thousand steps, they say, begins with the first 
step. So one by one, identify what your subtasks are and then begin to execute it. In executing it, yeah, I, don't forget, you're not going to look at the bigger picture. You're just going to focus on the small thing that you're doing at the moment. So right now, I'm going to write basic Hello World in HTML, but I actually want to build a, a, a website. Now we'll get to that later, my HTML, then my CSS. Okay, now I can write CSS well. Oh, I need to pick up a CSS framework, master CSS, pick up a framework. Because if you take too many things at a time, you are going to get overwhelmed and you are going to actually give up. I'm saying that from plenty of experiences, actually going to give up. So you take it one by one, bit by bit. Um, you are going to see people who are doing faster, but you are going to have to identify what your pace is and move at that pace because that's really what is important. Identify what your pace is, identify how well you execute the task. Remember that it's about the process and the progress you are making and not the big picture really, because if you rush to the big picture and you don't get all the steps well, you are going to actually wobble when you get the big picture done. But if you get all the steps done properly, when you arrive at the big picture, you are so confident at the task, you are not going to wonder how am I going to get this done. So I think that's really how to run an execution for whatever you really want to do. All right, thank you so much, Joshua. So, um, I remember I used to work with a guy who had been smoking for many years and he was trying to quit. So one day he went to a smoking cinema, seminar and the person just told them, you know what guys, if you want to stop smoking, just stop now. Don't say I'm going to stop after this cigarette. Don't, go, don't take another one. Bring out your pack of cigarettes straight away. I don't know if the guy smokes now. I mean, this was about maybe 10 years ago. But I remember that for the next two years, I never saw him smoke a cigarette. So that was how he quit that habit because he just did it now. So once you know where you're going, you've broken your tasks down, you know your destination, you've identified your constraints, you've identified your, your distractions, you know your building blocks, just get started. Don't, don't wait. Don't say, oh, I'll start tomorrow morning because then you probably never start. I'll start when I have a Mac. You probably never start. I'll start when the internet is stable. You probably never start. Um, I'll start after maybe liking this post on Facebook or something. Then you, maybe you never start. Just start now. Just do it. Sorry, did you guys hear what I said before I got here? Yes. After yes. Joshua, okay. So I was saying that, um, yeah, I just want to say I went on mute. So, you know, just get it done. You know, just, just start, don't, don't wait. So I saw this again on the internet. I don't know who, who is the original author. Some sources quoted Big Bill Gates, some quoted Edison, but Edison is older, so we can give it to Edison. So maybe Bill Gates read Edison and quoted him as well, and it was attributed to him. But let's just get it done. Let's get started. Right, so the next E, and I'll be calling Ruby to help us with this one, is evaluate, right? So if you're gonna achieve anything, you've got to evaluate. You've got to look at what worked and what didn't work. You can't. You can't make progress. Um, I think someone said you cannot improve what you don't measure. So there's a um, this cycle of do measure learn. You need to measure. You need to find out what's working. So if you've completed the first module, you need to go back and ask yourself, okay, now congratulations to me. Celebrate it. Whether it's with um, a bottle of soft drink or whatever it is that you indulge in, or maybe with some time on your game, gaming device. But you have to ask yourself, what did I do well? What didn't I do well? Now, some of these principles, for the product managers here, they would have noticed that I pretty much borrowed from the concept of managing a project. I know Emmanuel would have seen similar things. So what we do with when we're managing big projects, building big software, and we've, you know, I've been responsible for building some big software in the past. It's pretty much the same principles, right? At the end of every two-week sprint, we ask ourselves what worked, 
what didn't work? What could we have done differently? Or we ask ourselves, what should we keep doing? What should we do differently? And that's how this big ginormous pieces of software are built because people keep asking themselves at the end of one cycle, evaluation. If you don't evaluate, then you're unable to make progress. So Ruby, how did you evaluate? Okay, so um, I, first of all, um, at some point I was stuck, you know, especially, let me use for example, the CSS models. The CSS models really gave me tough time, so to speak. And I was, you know, I, I, I went through the, I went through the models again. I tried to go through the lectures again. And then at some point I, I realized I wasn't getting like a part of, you know, a part of um, the lessons. And then um, I think it was Ada that reached out to me and said, ah, what's happening? We, have, we, have, we haven't seen your pull request. I said, I'm just struggling on um, a particular portion of the model. And, you know, I had to identify, because these, these are the areas where I'm having a challenge. I think it was with the absolute positioning or something like that. And then um, she was, she, okay, she told me she would have a meeting with me. We, I think we were up until 12 midnight. She, that was when I, 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 owned, I, I saw Tim Bria for the first time. She actually logged into my laptop and then she was working and I was just staring at her, you know, because she was able to identify, okay, I was able to identify where I had issues. And then she came in and then she helped me. I think we had done about 1231 dareish um, thereabouts. And then for me, when that module was over, I had to, till now, CSS is my absolute favorite because of the of what I went through with that um, module. And it, I think it was um, last year, we were doing a course with uh, um, Moi and the um, module pair. Uh, and then they were saying, go and learn bootstrap. I don't want to learn bootstrap. I, le I love CSS. They go and learn bootstrap because I don't want to learn anything from CSS because I really enjoyed the module after I had gone through, you know, all that. Because I, I was able to identify what didn't work, okay, what worked, and um, what, what should you do hereafter, you know? So um, uh, also, I think um, Dufuna's model is very well broken down. So after software development, you are going to HTML, you are going to HTML, um, you know, it's in steps. So when I'm in a model, I'm like, okay, I'm at, and you no, know, the app shows you, you are 20%, you are 50%, then you have 22, uh, you have done 12, 12 quizzes and you have 15, whatever left. So I check my progress often, daily, and I'm looking at, no, I'm, I'm heading to 90, I'm heading to 99, I'm heading to 98, you know? So those things are things that just keep spoiling me. So when I'm at 50, I'm, okay, I'm going to 60 now, I'm going to 70. Quiz, when I see quiz done, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, um, um, something merged. Oh, I'm so excited. Like, wow, I'm done with this up to the next, you know? So when I have that not merged yet, I'm always checking my app. And Ada, please answer me, Reti, please merge my PR, you know, and like, just wait. I, say, I can't wait, answer me, you know. So checking your progress is really, really helpful. You know, it just keeps me on track. And then, you know, you get to the end, you know, step by step, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Ruby. It feels like you're still in the code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So the question I'd like to ask you guys here is when you have a goal, when you're managing your time, who is keeping you accountable? I think this is really important. Not everyone is self-motivated. It's possible that Joshua and Ruby are self-motivated. The question is, if you know yourself, and you know that you're the kind of person that will give up in the middle of um, a project, in the middle of a task. Do you have someone um, who's keeping you accountable? So I remember when I, when I was studying, I, I did an MBA. So one of the things we did at the, during the MBA was we were paired with someone else. The person was called our co-coach. So a coach is not necessarily, I know in football, the coach is some big boss telling people what to do. But the concept of co-coaching is a pair, someone who's at your level, who is urging you on. So people do it really well, actually. There are two ladies. I think I'm going to bring them, maybe, we're going to have these sessions regularly. 
I feel like I'm a radio host now, like um, interviewing people. So I think next I'm going to bring these two ladies, Tomike and Christiana. <laughs> they keep themselves going. I don't know enough about them. Sometimes I feel, you know, why are they always pinging me at the same time? If Tomike pings me at 5 p.m., by 5.05 or 5.02, Christiana will ping me as well. I think... I mean, they're still working at it. I know they're still trying to get a job and I know they'll get one. But what they have done is they've kept themselves going. Maybe one of them wouldn't have been able to make it this far, but both of them, they've kind of kept pushing. So I think for those of you who may not be necessarily self-motivated, this is something you can do. Find someone on the course, someone who can you can work with you can move with. For those from the um, Hakkasin Residence Program, you guys have a great cohort. How about find a pair, find someone you can keep going on with, be accountable to them. When you're sleeping, they're probably the people, that, the person that, that the guys that wake you up and tell, ask you, hey, you know, let's put in a, f- a few more hours here. So if you can't do it all by yourself, you're not self-motivated, then find someone to go with. I think it's the, I don't know if it's a Chinese proverb, but I've heard the saying before, that if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go with someone, right? So don't travel alone. Find a partner to go with. So I'll try to summarize. So as you've noticed, it's A, B, C, D, E squared, not the A, B, C, D. A is for your aim. B is for your building blocks. C, your constraints. Those are the things in your life that can stop you from succeeding. You can't get rid of them, but you can manage them, i.e. children, family, your job. Right? I'm not asking you to go quit your job to come learn how to code. D are your distractions. Also can stop you from succeeding, but you can, you have control over those, as hard as they may be. The first E is for execution. The last E for evaluation thank you very much and i think we can take questions thank you guys so if you've got questions you want to put them in chat and I will answer them with Joshua and with Ruby as well. So anyone has questions? Okay, Christiana is actually here. So maybe I'll get Christiana and I'm sure Tomika will be here as well. I didn't know they were here, I couldn't see you guys. I just knew that you guys were always going together. Yeah, Tomika is here. So Tomika and Christiana, can you tell us how you guys keep yourselves going? Maybe Tomika should go first. I'm putting you on the spot. Hi, Christian. Tomika is here. Yeah, Tomika, do you want to talk? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Tomika. Yeah. So how do you keep yourself going? You and Christiana. What's the what's the secret? The secret basically is um finding someone you can actually work with. Because most of the times you even though you have um even though you have a target that you want to meet, there are sometimes that you you don't just feel like carrying your system and and working, but when you have or that when you have other people that you work together, they motivate you. Like Christiana, most of the time when I don't feel like working, she have to push me, we have to do this, we have to do this. So that's collaborating with other developers and actually keeping in touch with them can actually, that was what has helped me actually, basically. Thank you, Tomika. Christiana, do you want to add to that? Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Okay, so I think that she has well said the most part of it because 
most times we actually always together and we most times if I maybe I don't check my Slack, I have some messages. She's always the one that is on the on the verge of okay, you have a message, like we're always keeping up. She's always like the one keeping up with okay, maybe messages and tasks and me, I'm like maybe at times I miss them and I'm not I'm not always on spot. So it's like she has been my support and we're always together. Accountability has actually helped. Then collaborating on maybe projects has been keeping us going. Then mentors in in this particular um um career has really pushed us a lot actually. Mentors, projects and accountability. Cool, thanks, Christina. So please if you have questions, type it up and one of us will help, we'll give we'll answer it. Or even any other comments as well. No questions. After working on all those slides, nobody has questions. So it's either we've done a fantastic job or we didn't do enough. Does anyone have questions? If you have questions, can you raise your hands, please? I feel like crying. Any questions? None. Any thoughts? Did you guys find it helpful or useful? Okay, somebody's making me feel cool, feel happy. Victor. <laughs> All right, any thoughts? Is there anyone struggling with anything that, um, you know, that we can help with? Anything that is not, that maybe I didn't address or something that wasn't, that didn't come across quite well. You're struggling to code, you have some, some challenges you'd like to overcome. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Mapenze. Um, I do have uh, a, uh, some challenges, so I would rather, I think, inbox. Okay, please do. So yeah, please do. You should be expecting something from me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. All right. All right. So I will share the slides. And I think I feel like I'm going to share the recording on the slides, actually. So, um, yeah. And if you have any questions, or facing any challenges, you need help with anything, you know where to find me. I'm on Slack. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank you so much to everyone. Thank you for attending. Thank you. And Yes, we'll see you again next month where we'll bring you another topic, maybe with another speaker or set of speakers. Back to you, Manuel. All right, thank you, Talks, for that um, lovely presentation. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Ruby. And thank you to everyone that joined this evening. Um, I'm sure we've all picked up um, one point or another. and. Uh, most importantly, um, just a quick summary of some of the things I caught is um, when you you always have a goal, you always have a big thing that you want to work on, but um, don't overthink the big thing. Just start small. Look at look at the your old big goal. Divide it into smaller things that you can achieve in shorter bits, and focus on the task at hand, part time. And over time, um, the smaller tasks, they all come together to form the big goal that you want to achieve. Um, that's, that's one of the key things I, I uh, caught. So, and no matter also how much you plan, no matter um, how big your goal is and how far you have divided your goals into smaller tasks, if you don't um, 
do away with with things that uh, with um, distractions, you most likely will not start. And no matter how much you really, really want to start and your good intentions are all, if you don't start, you don't, you will not finish. So like Joshua mentioned, the journey of a thousand miles starts with just one step. So you, we've um, learned how to manage our time this evening and how to achieve our goals. So um, I think the, the maybe a way to just end this is uh, don't just hear this, don't just listen to this, but actually whatever you want to do or whatever you, have or you are already doing, please start. Try and um, um, look at all the distractions, do away with them, plan well, but more than planning, more than taking away distractions and all, please do start. And um, I think we can end it on that note. And I wish everyone um, a lovely evening till we see again in the next AMA session next month. And please, if you have any questions, if you have any challenge, if you have anything that you're battling with, please don't forget to drop me uh, reach out on Slack, drop messages. You can mention me, Afalake, me talks, um, Tolu Lokwe, Babs, and someone will definitely be there to respond to you. And even if one of us don't respond immediately, your question might be something that one other, someone else has gone through and they can also provide answers to you. So please don't be shy to drop um, your questions and challenges on this on Slack. And um, yeah, I think again, I'm saying thank you for joining and do have a very lovely evening. See you on Slack. Bye for now. Hi guys, see you around. Thank you for coming. Thank you.